Well, I've got an absolutely fantastic summer afternoon. It's early July and it's very, very warm and sunny. And I've got a relatively calm, calm sea and crystal clear water. An absolute pleasure being by the water here. And to me, these are the perfect conditions to have a bit of fun, a bit of summer fun, lure fishing for wrasse. Now I'm fishing over a rough ground mark. It's very rough, very, there you go look I'm got stuck there um, it's very very rough very rough ground there's a few sandy patches particularly where I'll be uh, very rough where I'll be fishing later very few sandy patches but here there's a few perfect perfect ground for wrasse fishing now wrasse tend to be active during the day rather than they, they put themselves to bed at night so they're not active at night and they're, they're more active when you get these calm conditions over this shallow rough ground rather than when it's rough so I'm pretty confident of at least catching a wrasse I don't know whether it would be a big wrasse but I'm confident of catching one during this session whereas if I was say trying to fish for bass in these calm bright daytime clear conditions I wouldn't I wouldn't be confident and I'd probably choose to come uh, at dawn darkness into dawn or or at dusk dusk into darkness or on a very very overcast day and when the sea is a bit rougher I'd feel more comf there we go there we go we're in I thought if there's one if there's one fish if there's one fish that I always feel confident in uh, in catching, given that given I've got these conditions and typical wrasse ground, it is wrasse. I mean they they are a they are a great fish to to fish for. They do offer some fantastic sport and. certainly a lot easier than trying to trying to catch trying to catch bass basically because there's more of them there's more of them but there you go what a great start absolutely beautiful beautiful wrasse beautiful colors and hopefully if i can get some more we might see some varied colors today this is not not a big wrasse um as but no, it's still we've got one so I'll carry on and see if I can catch some more and away it goes now I was talking there to be honest I, I can't remember if I said so I'll say it again that what I'll do is In a moment, I'll have a look at the, set, the few weedless lures that I'm I'm fishing. I'm fishing weedless today because of this because it's such rough ground. Weedless soft plastics on we on jig heads. We'll have a look at one or two of the different uh, lures that I've got with me. And for those that you're interested, the the tack the other the other tackle I've got with me. But basically, that first rust there was caught on a. A little three-inch sluggo, which is one of my one of my one of my favourites for wrasse fishing, on a, on a weedless jig head. Okay, what I'm doing is casting this out as far as I can over the rough ground. And I'm letting it sink right down into the rough ground. I'm, I'm, I'm not trying to avoid the rough ground. In fact, I'm fishing this lure as if I am trying to lose it. If I wanted to lose it, and there you go, and there you go. I'm stuck. I got stuck there. But being that it's weedless, I managed to pull it out. So I'm fishing it as if I'm trying to lose it. So in other words, I'm jigging it right down in that rough ground, keeping it walking it along the bottom or keeping it close just a slow twitch basically keeping it on the bottom or very very close to the bottom 
because um, that's where the rats are going to be. I mean, they will come right up, right up and take a lure. I mean, we're in shallow, shallow ground here, so they will come up from the bottom and take it. But that's the way I'm fishing it. I'm fishing, I'm fishing slow. There we go. That, that getting caught in that rock there made a bit of a bit of a mess of that. So just just resetting it. So I'm fishing this lure slow, not quick. Just very, very slowly working it. But yeah, trying to keep trying to keep it da down in that rough ground. So, so it's basically just a little twitch. I'm almost almost you could say I'm trying to walk it back rather than cranking it back. Just walking it back. I'm just coming up over the side of a of a rock here, and I just walk it up the side of the rock and walk it, walk it over the rock, and then down down the other down the, to the into the gully the other side. Let it just letting it drop down now in this gully, which which of course is where they can uh, uh, they lot they lot they often sit uh, down in the gullies clo close to the rock. We're on, we're on the we're on the ebb tide at the moment. I'm I'm actually about about three three hours before low water. So what I'm waiting to do is get out onto this rock here, where I, I actually can access a lot more of the rough ground, where I stand more chance of a of a decent sized rat. I'm quite a way back here, where it where it's going into from rough ground into into beach. So probably in another. In fact. I, I'll probably get out there in a minute. Get out onto that rock, and then uh, then I really will be fishing in, in some rough ground. There we go, there we go. Ah, no, he's up, he's up. I thought I thought I got it stuck for a moment. Do you know what they are? They are great fun rats. Not not very big, big rats. This is surprising. This this one actually fell. It fell a lot bigger than it is. Different colour though. It's one of those spotty ones. Brown with the um with the white spots. I, I sometimes you get I love the ones that have got that are green with the sort of very very creamy spots. But yeah, beautiful, beautiful little ras. Well that's not bad, that's ras number two. And down it goes. Right, I think it's time that we have a look at the, the lures that I've got with me and the setup. Alright, so I've got a, a mix of a mix of lures with me. And got that one, which is the three-inch sluggo, which has caught the couple of rats so far so far. As I said, one of one of my favourites. And all, all of the lures that we're going to look at, I've got them rigged on an offset jig, a weedless jig head. This is 7 grams, and I think it's on a 2 -oh hook. They're made by Spro, Spro jig heads, offset jig heads. Now 7 gram to me is the ideal weight of this mark anyway, in the fact that it's heavy enough for me to be able to cast the 
cast the lure out a reasonable distance, although I don't need to cast out very far. Let's say as long as I can cast 30, 30 yards, I'm going to be covering a lot of rough ground. Heavy, heavy enough for that, but not too heavy that it that it goes down heavy and sinks right down heavy into that rough ground, and and, and light enough for me to to work it to work it through that weed uh, and over those rocks with, with ease. So that's the that's the, the jig head that they're all, all the lures on. So I've also got another sluggo, but this is a slightly bigger one. This is the four inch sluggo. And I might have a go at that later, see if it will pick up a few bigger bigger fish. Now to me, when you go ras fishing, lures that let's say that range from about three to, to four inches, inches are absolutely ideal. That's not to say that ras won't take uh, bigger lures. I mean, I've had ras on, on bass plugs, so they will take them. But generally speaking, three to four inches is, is ideal. So that's the four inch sluggo. These are my favourites. But then I've got a bit of a mix. Got a little paddle tail lure there. Again, a little three inch paddle tail. And then little minnow type. Little straight tail minnow. And I've also got with me these little curly tails these eco gear curly towers which can work uh, really well and some of these worms these these Im imitation uh, imitation rag worms which also can work work well but basically what i do is the slugger is my favorite I'll, I'll fish with that and if i if i just keep catching with it then then to me there's no point there's no point in in changing but if i stop catching catching on it then I might try one of the other lures but basically small soft plastics those type of lures and to be honest with you if the rats are here which they will be I mean you, chances are the chances are I will probably could probably catch a ras on any of these lures it's just that of course I like all of us we have our favorites the one that we're most confident in and and, and that and that's the one we, we tend to use the most now when it comes to the the rod and the reel etc what I've got here this is this is an eight foot lure rod it's a this one's 15 to 40 40 grams it's not an expensive rod I don't I don't have I need I need personally need so many different rods for the kayak fishing the different types of shore fishing I can't afford to have loads of different expensive rods as long as the rod is a decent quality for the money and it gets the lure out there it's got a nice it's nice and light it's got a, a decent decent action to it to me what more what more do you what more do you want i'd rather spend the money if i'm going to spend a little bit more money on a reasonably decent reel now this one's this was a 4000 lure reel it's a shimano air aeronos unfortunately they don't make them anymore shimano uh, this has been a good reel but no no doubt they've replaced it replaced it with with something else but again this one was i think it was about it's well it's under put its way it's under it's under 100 pound and and it's been it's been a great reel now i'm using braid today basically because i've got that direct fit, direct contact with the lure so i can feel feel it working along the bottom i get immediate immediate reaction immediate feel when I feel a ras and I also get immediate feel when I when I get into a rock and it gives me a chance then to maybe get it out uh, of the snag before it gets really snagged but it's 20 pound it's 20 pound braid now I know a lot of you will think well okay you're only you, you may be only like and in fact I do get this these comments sometimes uh, comments oh you know what it, you're only fishing for fish that might only weigh a couple of pound. What the hell are you using 15 pound braid for? Let's say like mackerel fishing. It's got, it's got nothing to do with the, the the weight of the fish. It's not, not quite like uh, freshwater fishing uh, where you may fish two pound line to pick up let's say five or six pound fish. It's to do with the ground you're fishing over. 
because it's so rough um, and because I'm casting the lures out and I'm having to work them through the rough ground I'm not I'm not um, working the lure over the rough ground if I was just working a lure over the rough ground then sure I could probably I don't know fish LRF tackle and get away with it but because I, I'm working over the rough ground you need you need something that's got a bit of abrasion resistance and also that bit of power that bit of power that you need uh, you, you get that wrasse snagged down in those rocks if you've only if you're only using say six pound uh, fluorocarbon or six pound braid and the chances are that you're not going to get you're not going to get that fish in it's a lot different fishing vertically and if I was LRF fishing that's how I would fish for rats here I wouldn't cast it out I would just work vertically down that's different when you're pulling them straight up but when you're casting it out and you're drawing it over that rough ground that's why in sea fishing and this is mainly for those that ask that question that's why in sea fishing sometimes you fish a lot heavier line than the fish you're going to catch is to do with the abrasion and uh, the, having a bit of an abrasion resistance right so 20 pound braid and then hang on let me get let me get this out a bit so I can show you and then join to the end of the braid I've got quite about this is about three and a half feet rubbing leader and again it's a rubbing leader I've got that lure working down in that rough ground in amongst those rocks the, this is this is a lot more abrasion resistance than if I then direct if I had the lure tied directly to the end of the braid where the braid might be rubbing on those rocks now this is 15 pound this is 15 pound fluorocarbon about three and a half feet and it's joined the braid to fluoro knot or braid to nylon if you wanted to use nylon this is the FG knot which I started using last no, last year and there's no doubt about it as everyone says uh, it, is the, it is the strongest knot now what I, what I tend to do is I tie this at home because I find it easier but if I get a break off here which I might do then what I'll probably do is do an easier knot to tie maybe a uni to uni knot or even a, an Albright special just to get me back fishing quickly and then down, down at the end of the the fluorocarbon rubbing leader I've got a, a, a small link to be able to clip the lure on and be able to change them easily and this is I think these are called breakaway mini links and they're pretty good okay so that's the that's the lures that's the setup and the idea is I think I mentioned it I'm not sure I got a bit excited catching those fish there I can't, I can't remember what I've told you and what I haven't told you to be honest but just in case I haven't cast it out let these lure these lures let the lure drop right down into the rough ground and then very slowly just walk it back so I'm walking it back and maybe when I lift it up it just comes up a little bit off the ground just try and keep it as close close to the rough ground as possible okay I'm going to carry on for a while with the, the little three inch sluggo that's caught the couple of rats so far uh, until this gets beaten up eventually of course they do get beaten up and I'll have to change and then I'll either maybe put the bigger one on or maybe try one of the other lures out we go let that drop right down and then just very very slowly I already there you see there that's the bottom so basically that's what I'm risking things like that getting snagged but uh, it's the best way to catch the fish another way of course you could uh, float fish for them 
which I tend to do when I'm fishing, like what I might sometimes do when I'm fishing deeper water for wrasse, maybe get a deep gully. It's a bit difficult, you can't really float, it's very difficult to float fish here. It's fairly shallow and then of course it's got the, the, the shallow gullies and then you've got the rocks like this that rise up. So if you, you can't sort of set your depth. Um, you set your depth to get down because you want to get get your, your bait down close to the bottom. You set it to the depth of one of the gullies and then of course it will drift. It will drift straight into a rock that rises up and you're constantly going get, to be, get, be getting snagged. So you've either got to just chuck a bait right down into the rough ground like a video I recently done or you fish this way, fish lures when you've got this shallow rough ground like this yeah, I'm just coming up over a rock there what I'm doing, and this is mainly for beginners those of you that do a lot of weedless lure fishing will know this anyway, but for beginners you've got your weedless hook there that sits on the top but what you can do, you make it more weedless but it's still got a bit of a point protruding what you do is if you just pull, you pull the soft plastic back and tuck the point of the hook in into the soft plastic I hope you can see this so that you're actually hiding the point of the hook but when of course the fish comes and bites it'll still be able to push down, it bites down and then the hook becomes exposed. So yeah, just pull the soft plastic back, just nick it into the top there, so there's no, no hook exposed. And that's another way of uh, avoiding, avoiding getting snagged. Right, I'm in a spot now where I can cover a lot more ground. I can fan my, I can fan my cast cast out now to try and cover different areas to find out where those wrasse are lying. Actually I quite absolutely love this slow this slow fishing. You know instead of sometimes when we um, we lure fish plugs and spinners you 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 you, re you can reel at a slow pace but you're you're working them this this is really lo lovely lovely slow fishing just just working that lure, bouncing that lure along the bottom. It's, it's, it's great fun. It's real, it's real finesse stuff. And it's great when you, are you great when you get the knock of the, the knock of the ras. You, you could, you learn to, to recognize it. Unlike when you get the knock of the rock, when you're hitting a rock, it's a different feeling you get that little indication that hello there's a, there's a ras interested in it there we go there we go there we go oh come up god they they'll dive they'll take you back down into that rough ground if you let them you've got to be a bit hard on these Well, this one, it absolutely ate that soft plastic. In fact, it, it took it in so much, even though it's a small wrasse, the actual, the, the jig head was in its mouth as well. So this one was hungry. I'll just give that one a bit of time. And a small one, again, but never mind. Come here fantastic sport you gotta watch you gotta watch the these wrasse look at that that's it that's its spines it's got all these spines on the back there what I tried to do is bend those back told it's got a spine underneath as well that you got to be careful of right 
Right, we'll get it back. Yeah, that's fine. Well, this one's getting a little bit, uh, a little bit beaten up now. It's, it's okay, but it's, it's getting a bit split. So we'll have a change. And what I'll do is I, I think I'll put that bigger, that bigger sluggo on that, that four inch one and uh, see if that will attract maybe a slightly bigger, bigger wrasse. One thing I forgot to, to mention when I put these together, what I do is I just put a little bit of super glue at the end of the soft plastic just to try and keep it, keep it to the jig head. I mean, eventually with this type of fishing, eventually it becomes separate and you have to keep resetting it, but just a little dab of super glue just helps for a while anyway. It helps to, um, helps to keep, it, keep it together. Oh blimey, Mr. Seal. Right, we'll cast away from away from the seal. Oh, oh blimey! Don't know if the camera you can see it on camera. Right out there. Okay. I'll try over here. Look how clear this water is, and that fantastic. I'll be honest, I feel like going swimming. I don't know about fishing. Right, we'll try. We'll try in this gully here. Now this is what I would do if I was LRF fishing for wrasse, this is what I would do, fish, fish more, or less, more or less fish vertically, just flick it out um, and then, then you can, you get, you can actually, you get a really good sized wrasse on, on that very light tackle um, because basically you're, fish, you're, you're fishing more or less vertical, just a very very slight angle. But when you're casting it right out and you're coming, at, coming across the rocks at a narrow angle, angle with that very light line, well, it's going to be a little bit difficult to uh, land a fish if you do get one. Well, I'm snagged. So there you go. Even, even though I'm fishing weedless, um, I'm, I'm, I'm stuck, stuck hard. So I might get it out, but I can't pull it out with the rod. So we're going to have to... We, looks like we got it. Yep, I got it. Well, that was lucky. Oh, blimey seal. Be interesting to hear actually how how you feel when you see that when you're fishing and you see one of these appear. Do you feel do you feel you're wasting your wasting your time when they start showing up? Well, lucky again there. I thought I was going to lose it that time. So it's not easy fishing fishing these marks that's for sure oh this damn seal <sighs> limey <sighs> everywhere I go it goes <sighs> well unfortunately I did get snagged badly and couldn't get it out so I lost that I lost that sluggo, so I'll take this opportunity to have a change and I've got this little little three inch paddle tail on which I've caught I've caught Rass on before so we'll, we'll give that one a go for a while. Well 
I'm not getting any any knocks on that lure, so I'm gonna I think I'm gonna go back to old favourite the sluggo. Um, and it, I mean, it might not be that. It could be the seal hanging around. Who knows? But yeah, I think I'll go back. We'll go back to the sluggo. All right, back to the sluggo. <clears throat> when you lure fishing, there's nothing quite like having confidence in, in a lure that you're you're using but of course confidence comes with success you get success and then of course you feel more confident <clears throat> other other lures of course will uh, little, got a little touch then uh, it, oh he's got it no he's uh, he's too small he's a, he's a very small wrasse and even even though this little three inch sluggo um, you can't can't quite get it in its mouth. Yeah, I mean it's confidence. And the thing is, with uh, I, I I love personally, I love lures that imitate imitate the bait fish well. So you know something if it's a sand eel, something that imitates the sand eel well. Um, to me, just I don't know, it just make it just makes just makes sense. Or imitates a sprat, or imitates a mackerel, or a smelt, or if you're bass fishing, whatever. But yeah, the, the, the lures, certainly in Cornwall anyway, the lures that um, imitate sand eels well, whether they be hard lures or soft lures, are usually, usually a pretty good bet for most species, including the bass of course well I don't seem to be anything down there usually see them uh, if they're hiding down close to the rock you see them they'll come out come out and at least have a look at the lure if, even, if, even if they don't take it but uh, hopefully this seal has gone Oh, it's a good one. This is a good one. I, I actually, I actually was snagged. I had to, I had to pull it out, and um, I pulled it out, and then immediately the rust, the rust took it. Oh, it's a better one anyway. Yeah, actually, then no, this is a nice one. Not a monster. There you go, the, the sluggo. Yeah, lovely. Better ass. Beautiful, beautiful. Got the uh, very sort of light green spots. Brown, brown and orange and light green spots. Beautiful fish. Great. Get it back. Yeah, 
off it goes. Well, that was lucky. Like I said, I got, I got snagged, snagged hard, and I had to pull the uh, pull the line. I'm not using the rod, but I was snagged that bag badly. It popped out, and then suddenly, bang! That that rasp grabbed it. Just goes to show that must have been that was right right hard into the rough ground. I've just had to change the my camera. If you notice on a few of the previous shots, there's a bit of a haze. Um, it's a problem I, I get all the time when I get this very, very warm weather. I, the camera's fine for a while, and then I get a haze up here, and if I forget about it and forget to change the camera, um, it's really annoying. I suppose it's just the it's moisture it gets in somewhere, even though I've been through all the stuff about uh, adjusting the temperature of your camera from room temperature to outside temperature and storing them with silicon gels and all the rest of it it's a it's a real pain particularly if you don't notice it so hopefully this one's clearer but it, this one might go a little bit hate in this heat it's so hot and humid today this one might go a little bit hazy get a bit of a haze on the shots with this one but unfortunately there's not much I can do about it well it's gone very quiet now we're just coming up to low water and it's gone pretty dead and I expect I'm hoping that uh, it'll pick up start getting a few uh, bites again when the tide starts flooding in but we'll <clears throat> we'll see well the tide has started to to flood in now so fingers crossed we'll get one or two fish start biting again well I was just about to give up to be honest because I've, I've, I've got to go now anyway and I thought I know I know if I could stay here with the tide when the tide picks up the fishing will pick up again and I'm pleased to I'm really pleased to get this this one even though it is even though it's small lovely little rast to finish off the day well that was a huge amount of fun on such a fantastic warm summer's afternoon great fun it's just unfortunate I've got to go now the tide is flooding in and I'm pretty confident if I could stay I'm pretty confident of catching more but that's that's just the way it is now this type of fishing is not easy easy fishing when you're fishing lures down in the rough ground and even though I was fishing weedless today I still I did end up losing three lures which is a bit of a pain but that's that's just the way it is you've got you've got to accept it but it's, it's a great way to fish for them you just it's, it's slow fishing and and uh, finesse fishing where you're casting out you're slowly working that lure through that rough ground and over those rocks and yeah okay you you keep getting snagged in the kelp and most times you can get it out but occasionally you can't but great when you learn to recognize then you you suddenly get the tap 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 of the wrasse and then the take um it's great fun and the great thing about wrasse of course is they're abundant if ever i come wrasse fishing i'm always in the right conditions i'm always pretty confident of success i can't say that for other species and if you do get a good a big one a really good size wrasse they can they can take some some stop some stopping stopping them diving down into that into that rough ground and getting you snagged so brilliant way to spend the summer's afternoon and hope you enjoyed it so once again i hope you found that useful and many many thanks for watching